Hello, this is Professor BRB, and today we're going to be exploring the stroke and the fill functions of Illustrator and gradients, both the gradient tool and the gradient panel. And we will be taking an illustration of a clock that we created in the previous video and applying various strokes and fills in order to create this more realistic metallic looking clock. So let's get started. First, we're going to go up to our view menu and choose outline. And we can see that uh, what appeared to be a fill here was actually a stroke. And if we go to our stroke menu here, you'll see that's a 24 point stroke, which is quite wide. And that it is aligned to the outside of the stroke. And we have this option in the strokes panel to align to the center, to the inside, or to the outside. And uh, one nice thing about doing it this way is I can still increase the weight if I want to or decrease it. Oh, so it's kind of handy. Uh, in order to find our gradient, now of course we can use our gradient panel uh, to create custom gradients. Uh, but Illustrator ships with a really nice selection of pre-made gradients, which you can edit. So I like to start with those. So if you go into your swatches panel, and click here, uh, go down to gradients, and you'll see metals. This is in every version of Illustrator that I can ever remember. And so I'm sure it'll be in your version. And I have this set up to a uh, large list view so that I can see the names. The two gradients that I want are right on top, gold, click once, and that appears in my panel, and gold radial. So that's great. Always make sure uh, when you're using your swatches panel that you know whether you're using your, swat, your stroke or your fill. In this case, I had my stroke on top, which is just what I wanted. Now, my gradient uh, panel isn't showing, so I'm just going to find it in the window, and there it is. And you'll see right now this isn't displaying the way that I want. This is the outside of the gradient, and all I can see is the dark. So I'm just going to grab this light slider and pull it right over here. And we can reorganize these sliders any way that we want in this panel. We can remove them just by pulling them away, um, and we can add new ones just by clicking here. Uh, we can also, uh, we're not going to do it in this particular tutorial, but we can also add transparency to a slider right down here with opacity. Um, but that's not what we're doing today, but it's a good thing to know that you can do it. Uh, also, with this little uh, reverse gradient, we can reverse where the center displays, right like this. And I'm just really eyeballing this and adjusting this till I kind of like the way it looks. If I think this is too light here, I can double click on it and I can actually darken it up a little bit if I want. So you've got a lot of, a lot of choices there. So that got me started. Um, and once again, since it's still a live stroke, I can make it thicker or less thick if I want to do that. That's kind of cool. Now we'll go back to our layers panel here and I'm going to twirl this layer open so I can see all my sub layers. And uh, one important thing to realize is that every time you create a path in Illustrator, it creates a sub layer. And um, it can be a little bit confusing when you look in your layers panel because you get this little thumbnail here but it doesn't give you any sense of scale. So for example, these black dots here, if I turn that off, you can see that's this little dot, but it looks the same as this, which is uh, my big ring. So you just kind of have to be aware of that and uh, keep, keep organized. You can, if you want to, name these if it helps you keep track of it. I'm going to call that one large ring, just so if I want to know which one it is, I can check. So uh, next, I'm going to apply 
a dark fill and a light stroke to this. So let's go to our swatches panel. And first I want to apply a light stroke. So I make sure my stroke is on top here. And I'm just going to put the gradient there. And that, that looks fine actually. Now I'm going to go and put my fill on top and I'm going to give it a dark fill. Next I want to recolor the details on my clock face, but I can't really see them very well right now because um, there's a lack of contrast. So here's where our layers panel can make it a little easier for us. I'm going to turn off my big ring layer and turn off that path. And uh, I think I'll even turn off um, my two bells here. And what that did was it just made it easier for me with my selection tool to select all of my details at once. And um, in this case, uh, these are all little ellipses with a black fill. And then my two hands are actually strokes. So I'm going to go ahead and expand those. Expand appearance and expand stroke and fill. And now when I go to outline view, I can see that those are actually fills now. And it's just going to make my life a little easier. Back to preview. So I just want to make those white. Uh, and I'm going to make sure here that fill is on top and then select white. That's good. You can see they've all gone white in my. Layers panel, and I can turn this back on, and whoops, here's a surprise. Look, my hands have vanished. Why? Because in my stacking order, those two hands are down near the bottom. They're actually these little groups that we see right here. So what I need to do is Take these, select them with my selection tool, and just drag them up to the top of my stacking order. And I've got one more there, that little one in the middle. You can't grab it, it's easy enough to do. Select it, that shows me in my layers panel which one it is, so I can pull that right up to the top as well. And that's how you can kind of sometimes figure out what your uh, layers are doing. So I'm going to turn my bells back on here. And we had a pretty good luck with our uh, stroke and fill panel already. So now we're going to add gradients to the bells. And as I select this, I notice both of these shapes come alive. And that means they're grouped. So I'm going to ungroup them. And I'm going to ungroup this one so that I can deal with them separately. So let's select my first bell here and choose the gold radial gradient. And that looks okay, but I want to adjust the display a little bit more. So I'm going to go over here to my tool panel and choose the gradient tool with that selected. And notice now it's, uh, that, uh, let's zoom in on that a bit. Notice now that this here, that this little gradient slider has come up, and we can access all of the functions of the gradient uh, panel here right directly in the artboard. And I can move the center of the gradient around, and I can also move the sliders around. I'll just edit it any way that I want. Get that the way I like it. And that looks pretty good to me. So here, let's do the same one on this one. I note that I've got a black uh, stroke on those and I'm gonna get rid of that in a minute. Just grab our gradient tool. I'm gonna move the center of it over here. I want to get rid of the black stroke. Okay, 
stroke. And now I just want to do these two little details up here. I, I've got a black stroke on those two and I don't want it. So I'm just going to get rid of that, put the fill on top. And this time I'm going to choose the linear gradient. And that is not displaying it all the way that I want. So I'm going to choose my gradient tool. And now as I hover outside that little bar, when I get that circle with an arrow, that means that I can adjust the angle. And this is just kind of a little detail, but it's going to make it look a lot better. Yeah, that looks great. Apply the circle gradient here, and maybe just make a very small adjustment. And this here is a stroke. To make sure my stroke's on top. And I actually kind of like the way that's looking, so I'm just going to leave that here. Get rid of the fill. And linear gradient. Once again, um, I could adjust that angle in my gradient panel here, but I find it a lot easier to do it intuitively. Notice the angle changes here, and I could have done it if I had known what that value was going to be, but I didn't. And I just did it visually. So that looks pretty good. Let's go down to the bottom and we're just going to do the same thing on the little legs here. I've got my fill on top and I'm going to choose the linear gradient this time. Go to my gradient tool, adjust it. So I like the way it looks. And then the same thing over here. There we go. Gradient tool. And adjust it. Before we close, I want to show you one other handy shortcut. Uh, when you are applying gradients to strokes. In order to do that, I'm going to draw a rectangle and an ellipse up here. And we've applied this wide 40 point stroke and the radial gradient, <coughs> those type radial. And you'll see that this little um, set of controls comes alive then. And I'm going to select both of these. And this is the default, apply gradient within stroke. I can also choose to apply it across the stroke. And here's the really neat little uh, shortcut that uh, actually would have saved us a few steps in the earlier part of this video. If I click there, you notice that it applies the radial across the stroke so that this center um, here is actually placed in the center. So that's really a very cool thing. And if we hit the flip, it does the opposite. So uh, the gradient uh, applying to a stroke is a very powerful uh, feature in Adobe Illustrator, and I hope you will find many opportunities to use it.